Hey guys, and welcome to another Escape Wheel Watch Review. Today, we're looking at the newly updated Corju Chronograph. This is an Omega Speedmaster homage. So this one was updated just last month in May of 2021. And uh, all they did, I think, was enlarge the dial a little bit and shrink down the bezel from what they used to have. So this is what they used to have on the right. And you can see it compared to what's it now. So definitely looks a lot better now. Uh, the proportions, I think, are spot on. And yeah, I think they, they pretty much nailed this thing. So so you can pick these up on AliExpress from various resellers. Uh, prices are uh, $55 on this uh, canvas strap here or $57 on this bracelet. And then they also offer little discounts here and there. I was able to get this one for 55 bucks and it arrived in the US in two weeks. So uh, really impressed. And for 55 bucks, uh, you get yourself a really, really nice watch. Um, so yeah, I think uh, we should get into this review. I know you guys have been uh, looking at this up here. I do have the Fleeta Speedmaster. Uh, so I will be making references to this one throughout the review. Um, here's a, a quick shout right uh, right off the bat for you guys. Um, but yeah, uh, I love this watch. Uh, but I'm really, really, really tempted to keep this one instead of the Felita. And uh, we'll kind of touch base on that throughout the review. But first things first, uh, let's get the dimensions out of the way. So I believe the Felita was... 42 millimeters and then it was 48 lug to lug this one is 40.9 the bezel on it is 40 millimeters we have 20 millimeter lug width the thickness is 13.1 and that's to that top hat mineral crystal the thickness without is about 11.2 the lug to lug on this is 47.4 and because it has the uh, female end links, uh, the overall length is 48 millimeters. So it's very wearable size. Uh, and that's one of the things that I never, I never really got on with the, uh, the Fleeta. It's, it's a great watch. Uh, I think it looks fantastic, but it was just a little bit too big for my liking. I think the Fleeta is pretty accurate to the real Omega. Uh, while the Corju is uh, more more in line with uh, like a vintage Omega. So um, yeah, just, just keep that in mind. Uh, I think both of them are perfectly acceptable. Uh, I just prefer smaller watches. So here you can see them side by side. Why isn't that focusing? I have to do this. So here you can see them. So very, very similar case profile, I think, the, the lower case profile. Uh, it's just that bezel sits a lot shorter on the, the Corju. So you can see there's a pretty big dish on the fleet over here, while the, the dish on that bezel is really about half of what the, uh, the fleet is. So um, yeah, it just sits a little bit lower on the wrist, and I think it looks better for it. And uh, so I'm going to go outside and throw this on the wrist for you. So here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. As you can see, fits great. It's a lot slimmer than the, the uh, Fleet is. Got lots of reflection off that crystal, but still plenty legible. Bracelet, mostly comfortable. Uh, these pushers do stick into the wrist a little tiny bit, but it's not bad. Um, it does sit nice and flat on the wrist there. Really nice profile on this thing. The, the crystal on it is just great, as you can see there. No distortion on it, really, just just really clear uh, very happy with the crystal on it out in some direct sunlight here you can see the light playing off the uh, bezel and the crystal looking really good even in direct sunlight you can still read this thing plenty easy so very happy with the uh, the overall look of this thing on wrist I'm gonna go throw this on a bunch of straps for you guys and then we can get back to the review and here it is on the included uh, canvas strip, which I think is, looks really, really good. And it's definitely uh, broken in a lot over the last couple days that I've been wearing it. So don't pay attention to uh, what I say later on. Uh, the strap is actually pretty decent. So, yep, go throw down some more straps for you. Here we are on the uh, vintage Vario that you've seen time and time again. Uh, this thing doesn't look bad on any watch, so <laughs> no surprise here. It looks great. Here we are on a Olive Drab style Marine National. You can see that 
even with the one layer under it, it still fits pretty low to the wrist. But yeah, these these things look awesome on Speedmasters. I think you know Speedies are uh, strap monsters, so it's no surprise that this thing is looking good on pretty much anything I throw on it. We'll throw it on one more strap, and then we'll get back to the review. And last but not least, just a plain black. This is a seatbelt NATO strap. This is a Borealis seatbelt strap. But uh, yeah, I mean it's a black NATO on a uh, Speedmaster homage. You know, it's it's gonna look good. So, uh, but yeah, I think uh, you can pretty much throw anything on this thing, and it's gonna look great. Let's go back inside and get back to the review. All right, I'm going to zoom way in for the case finishing on this. Uh, really nicely done. So you have a horizontal brushing on the side of the case. Pretty nicely done. It's not perfect, but uh, really good, especially, uh, you know, 55 bucks. Really good brushing. Uh, you have brushed on the inside uh, next to the lugs here. And then you've got this nice chamfer, polished chamfer, that runs from the end of the lug kind of up and wraps around that top edge of the case. So it, it's got that twisted lugs of the, the Omega, and I think it looks really good. It kind of it kind of frames in the uh, the dial, and it makes it look a little bit smaller than it is, I think. So uh, really happy with that. You've got uh, polished pushers and a polished crown here unsigned. The case back on this thing, it's very boring. Uh, there's no signing or anything on it. So it's a screw in case back, which is nice. Or is a screw in, screw down? I don't know. The whole case back screws in. And then you've got uh, polished on the underside of the case there. So um, pretty nicely finished overall, I think, especially for the price. I mean, th this thing is finished like you would see, uh, like, you know, it's on the level of a Pagani design. Um, so uh, overall, pretty happy with the case finishing. You do have the bezel on this. It's kind of got that dish on it, like I was mentioned er mentioning earlier. It's a completely polished, and it is about half the size of that Fleeta. And it really keeps the overall profile down. Uh, I think it looks a lot better. Um, the bezel insert, it's an aluminum insert. Really nicely done. Printed nicely. Uh, the Fleeta has always had a little bit of a printing error on it. You can see that 225 there it's right at three o'clock and on the uh, omegas and on this corju it's in the right spot just a little bit below the uh the three o'clock position so uh, just a little thing to note overall i'm pretty happy with the bezel insert on this and they do offer this in uh, black green and blue so you do have your options and they also have i found uh, one of the guys on reddit found one and uh it's like the they almost popped this entire bezel insert off and put a new one on. It's kind of a sloped bezel insert. I'm going to put up a picture right here. And, yeah, it, it looks interesting. Uh, I wish they would have just gone with a silver insert instead. But, um, you know, that's just me. The crystal on this. So this is where things get kind of interesting. So this is a nice high dome, uh, you know, top hat, double dome. You can see there's no distortion to it until you get right on the edges. So that, that's an indication that it's a double dome and it's the same thickness all the way through. It is a mineral crystal, which is a, a negative, I think. But putting this this crystal in sapphire uh, probably would have doubled the price. So uh, I'm okay with the trade-off. It kind of reminds me of uh, the Hesalite crystals. It's very clear. And that's the one thing. Like, I'm just going to put this down. Try and keep them at the same angle here. But look at the clarity between the Corju and the Fleeta. So the, the Fleeta kind of always, it almost always has this milky appearance to it. And I think that's because they're using, it's a double dome, but it's not even all the way through. So when you get to some angles there, you do get some distortion like right there. Whereas on the Corju, at that same angle, you don't get any distortion. So um, yeah, I think that's the reason why there's always just this milky look to the dial. While the Corju, uh, it's a very, you know, deep black dial all the time, uh, no matter what uh, position you're in. So I, I really think the crystal looks better on the Corju. I just wish it was sapphire. But, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. It's a $55 watch. You can't expect sapphire, especially in this profile um at this price so uh, i think it's a good trade-off i'm glad they went with this instead of uh you know uh, something with distortion because i i just think the glare with the distortion is just uh is, is too much so um yeah pretty happy with the crystal on this thing 
So zooming into the dial, you have a matte black dial. It looks really good. You got the Corju and the chronograph printing at the 12 o'clock position. You got a white printed minute track around the outside. It is broken up into three parts, which is kind of weird since it's four ticks per second. Um, but I guess this maybe looks a little bit better. I don't know. Uh, the subdials, you have a 24 hour counter at the three o'clock position. You have your running seconds hand at the six o'clock position. And then you have your chronograph minute counter on the nine o'clock position. And everything in there, it's, it's printed really nicely. And as you can see, there's a radial pattern on the subdial faces. You got the nice white hands, uh, very nicely done, I think. The hour, minute, and second hand in the middle here, uh, also really nicely done. Just a pure white hand on the black dial. It's extremely legible. You can see there's ever so slight bit of uh, misalignment here. I'm gonna put it right under the, uh, the camera. So that's about what it looks like in real life. So it's just a hair to the right. Um, it doesn't bother me enough to, to wanna get in there and fix it. So I'm gonna give it a pass. Um, the hour, minute, and second hand are loomed as well as all the uh, hour batons. Those are also loomed and they are printed on they are not applied, so that's another one of my gripes with the Fleeta. So the Fleeta used applied indexes, which sounds really nice, but uh, I believe the the Omegas are using a printed dial, so this is more true to the Omega, and I really appreciate that. It looks really good, and you also have those two little dots flanking the 12 o'clock baton. Those are also loomed as well. So uh, the loom on these things, it's not spectacular, but I'm going to pop it up anyway. Here you can see the Fleeta on the right-hand side, the Corjus in the middle, and then we've got the San Martin uh, sub on the left-hand side, which isn't really a fair fight. I uh, just wanted to give a benchmark, I guess. Uh, but you can see the Fleeta and the Corju are kind of battling it out, and they're roughly about the same. Uh, loom on these things are not great. I'm just going to leave it at that. Not great. Don't buy it for the loom. So let's talk about the movement in this thing. So this runs the Seiko VK63, and it is operated by this 3 o'clock crown. It is a screw-down crown, which is nice to see. Get a nice satisfying pop out. The first position is a goat's date position. I don't know if you can hear it. Taking a round back there. Um, you know, obviously I'd like it to not have that, but it is what it is. Um, these are one of these, these are some of those watches that you're going to set once and you're going to change it once or twice a year and that's it. So, um, not a big deal. Third position does hack the movement. You can see the second hand stops down there and then you can set your time pressing it back in and screwing it in. Uh, works just as expected. Everything is A-OK. -okay. Uh, pretty smooth action on the crown. Um, I'm pretty pleased with the uh, the overall action there. So if you're unsure about the uh, chronograph operation on this thing, it's pretty simple. The top pusher here is nice and snappy. Uh, much better than the Pagani and Parnas Daytonas that I've had. Uh, so that does start the chronograph second hand. You can see it ticking along at four ticks per second. Push it again, it'll stop it, and then reset with the bottom pusher, and it just snaps up. It doesn't do the whole uh, flyback thing. So, um, yeah, really happy with the chronograph movement on this thing. My only real complaint is with the actual dial, um, that chronograph minute counter, it only does five-minute increments. Uh, so if you're somewhere in between one and five minutes, uh, you're kind of guessing at, uh, at how many minutes it's gone by. So I wish they'd uh, address that. You know, Fleeta, I think, did a really good job with theirs you know they got ticks every minute as you can see on the uh, nine o'clock dial there um yeah really happy with the how fleet has done it i don't i don't mind the uh kind of asymmetrical design of this one so i wish uh Corju would do the same thing it's not a huge deal Cor you know, the chronograph isn't something i use uh, a ton so um but if you do use it that's just something to know keep that in mind so uh the bracelet on this thing, like I said, for $57, you do get this uh, decent bracelet, actually. Um, overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, especially for the price, again. Um, you do have solid end links. So I, met, I saw someone mention that these are not solid end links. They are, in fact, solid end links. Um, solid links. You do have the push pins, you know, split pin design for sizing. You have half links, which is nice to see. Uh, you got a, you know, the typical Corju butterfly clasp. It's a little chunky. These things stick out a little bit too much, I think. Um, I would really like them to just stick with a regular clasp, but, you know, maybe this one's cheaper. I don't know. It does have a nice seamless look to it. And I think the tolerances are actually um, 
you know they're, they're pretty decent on this thing so um yeah i, I don't mind uh, i don't mind it too much and it is uh, pretty comfortable so um yeah it's got that going for it the finishing on the bracelet you do have a little bit of a gap here uh you don't you can't move the end link the end link is in there really solid uh, you do have female end links which is nice uh you've got this kind of rough finishing on the end of this end link but i think for most people uh you know, it's, it's going to sit like this on your wrist, so you're not really going to see that. But the, the finishing is actually, you know, pretty nicely done. you got a nice satin brushing on the outer links here, and you've got polished in, links in the middle. And as typical with these cheap Chinese uh, watches, the polishing isn't great. It's good from far, but far from good, right? So you're looking at it like this. It looks pretty good. You get up close to it, and you can see the little peaks and valleys on the, uh, especially, you know, these links right here. You can see those peaks and valleys on the polished surfaces. Um, you know, it, it's typical with Corju. It's even typical with uh, Pagani design. So um, it wasn't unexpected, uh, but yeah. And uh, one thing I did want to mention is the bracelet does taper down to 18. So it's a two millimeter taper on the bracelet. Overall, uh, I'm pretty happy with the bracelet, and I would definitely suggest you know the extra two bucks to uh, just spring for this bracelet. It's pretty nice. Uh, the included canvas strap is right here. It's uh, it's a decent strap. It's pretty stiff out of the box. I think it'll break in fine. Um, you've got a leather on the underside here. Uh, no quick release or anything like that. You do have nice minimal stitching, and uh, this this pattern this color and this pattern i think are awesome it looks really really good as you uh, saw earlier the look of this strap is great um, hopefully it holds up nicely uh, you can see it's pretty thick here so it's really thick where it meets the the case and then it tapers down pretty thin um, yeah the, the buckle on this thing i'm pretty sure it's just an alloy buckle you can see the bottom of this here it's really rough right there that that lends me to believe it's a it's an alloy buckle just uh plated in chrome um but it's it's fine i've seen worse buckles <laughs> i'll say that um but yeah i i think uh i think this strap is really cool looking um and if you aren't a bracelet guy might as well get this one right because this one should should last uh, a while i think and uh, it should be fairly comfortable once it breaks in so did i have any quality control issues no i had none you can see uh, the bezel lines up with the dial really nicely uh the only real problem is the the chronograph second hand and you know it's i'd say right about right about there is uh how it looks in in every day just a little to the right uh, but that's pretty much it other than that i had uh, no quality control issues oh I, I lied um i did have trouble removing some of these pins and i've heard from another uh guy that he also had trouble removing these pins so um just keep that in mind. I was able to get a good fitment, um, but it took him a little bit of work to get it. So uh, just keep that in mind. Other than that, though, it, uh, it's really, really good. So there you have it. That's the Corju Chronograph for 2021. Uh, I think the changes that they made are perfect. They're spot on. Um, this is going to be fighting the fleet of here for wrist time. So uh, I'm going to keep both of these in the watch box, and I'll see which one I keep grabbing and uh, we'll go from there but right now i'm honestly leaning to keeping the corju and selling the fleeta so uh we'll see we'll see uh i just prefer the slimmer case uh the crystal is much more clear and the uh printed dial on the corju versus the fleeta dial is the applied so obviously i prefer the movement in this one it's much more interesting much more interesting to look at but uh, i'm not too fussed on a uh on movements really at this price point so uh, and like i said 55 bucks i can buy three of these things for the price of the fleeta and i can go out and i can buy three of these things right now uh, good luck getting a fleeta so um yeah i think there's definitely uh, some merit to having this maybe this would be a good uh good watch to get in the meantime um i think when you do go to sell this thing you're not going to lose hardly any money on these so um yeah, I, I think they're they're cheap enough. They're, I mean, it's almost in that impulse buy category, right? Um, 
I was actually thinking as soon as I pulled this out of the package and started wearing it, I was like, man, this would be a good uh, mod platform. It's a Seiko movement. I, I'm pretty sure it uses the same uh, pinion sizes as a NH35. So you have tons of hands to choose from. Uh, I was thinking maybe a broad arrow uh, Speedmaster chronograph would be kind of cool. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And uh, But yeah, I think for, for $55, uh, there's not much to complain about on this guy. So if you think you guys want one of these things, hit the link down below. That is an affiliate link. Uh, I really appreciate using the affiliate links. It helps the channel grow. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely would pick this thing up. I wouldn't really hesitate. There's lots of options to choose from, and it's a really good watch. And uh, yeah, I think you're, you're going to be happy with it. If you guys found the video helpful or useful in any way, uh, leave me a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. We're getting really close to a thousand subs. Uh, I'm going to be giving away a couple watches, I think. Uh, this Caddison Day Date will be one of them that's coming uh, next to the channel. Um, but yeah, let me let me know what you think about this watch down below. Uh, I like conversing with you guys. So I think that's about it. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. See ya.